My earliest memories are of gender dysphoria. I felt lost and at times like I couldn't survive. It took until I was 31 to publicly come out as a transgender woman. Nothing has been the same since. While on the road, I've met gender variant people from all walks of life, all at various points in their journeys. Hearing their stories and then being able to relate myself to it is what I need right now. When I was maybe four or five years old, there was a televised Madonna performance. And I just remember standing in front of the TV and it was like my first moment of self-recognition, of being like, that's me, not only gender-wise, but also like, that's what I want to do. I want to be exactly like that. I remember vividly like experiencing that and like seconds later, realizing the misalignment in my body. You know, I felt very feminine and very uh, female-like since a very early age. I felt I had no one to talk to. I had no resources to, like, go to. So I just kind of put it off. And so I didn't have, like, anyone. I had no idea, like, what to do with these feelings. I had no idea, like, that it even was, like, a valid feeling to experience. I remember being a young child around, like, six or seven years old and playing with my sister's clothes and playing dress up and stuff like that. And when I would play that role, it just felt right and it just felt like me. I didn't know it was gender dysphoria. We didn't have those words in my town. People didn't even know what was going on with me. A lot of therapy I had, and they would just say that I'm very male-identified female. Like, they didn't have the tools, and I didn't need, I didn't, had no idea. I just felt like a guy. I always felt that way. Since I was 19 years old, I've just been on tour. The band usually plays like 200 plus shows a year, so there is time off where you're in the studio or whatever, but other than studio life, it's all living on the road. I would love an Americano and whatever he's having. I don't know how to exist without caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, testosterone, don't fail me now. Are you really trying? <laughs> yes, I'm really trying to you. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God, that's going down in the record books. Do you feel like if there was like one thing that you wish could have been there for you? My parents were pretty lenient. I think they always kind of saw me as a tomboy, let me wear what I wanted. But like with school and everything, cause then like, okay, I'm in like a, a group of all these like seventh grade girls and I want to be like one of them and I'm not like I don't want to wear makeup and I feel like a freak because of it so it was more personal struggles with it knowing that there was something off but not knowing what it was I would explain it as saying a feeling of misalignment between the way you feel and the way other people perceive you. A feeling like that your gender does not line up with your assigned gender at birth. Well, when you're too young to know what it is, it turns into shame. Just simply being like, I mean, being five years old and being like, I want to be a girl. Like, that's, I feel like I should have been a girl. And then knowing that if you were to express those feelings to someone else, that they wouldn't be accepted or understood and that you'd be shamed for it. The earliest age that I knew I was struggling with my gender was four, and I felt I, could, I couldn't bring it up with my parents at all, or they would disown me. Well, I always felt really pressured by them to be very, like, normal, like, very assimilated. So, like, all of these things that I, you know, knew I wanted for myself, I didn't really feel like I could act on. If I grew up in a really strict religious household, um, their answer to my gender issues was to take me to a therapist and put me in a hospital and try and lock me away. At that point, it was worse because I was in puberty and it was just, I didn't know how to deal. Well, when I hit puberty, it makes you super hyper aware of everything because your hormones are running wild and your body is starting to change. So all the things that you're already aware about yourself become that much more exaggerated. I definitely shut down during puberty. I was just like, I became really awkward. Uh, I remember not being able to take a shower. I hated touching my body. I felt like my body wasn't mine, it was somebody else's. Things happen to your body and you know, then I realized, oh my God, I'm actually really a girl. <laughs> that was devastating for me. 
94.3 WCLY. It's a radio show for music fans. Laura, welcome to Spin Out. Thank you so much for having me. Is it possible this record maybe needed to happen more than any other Against Me record, Laura? You know, I, I wasn't necessarily writing for an audience when I was writing the songs. I was, I was really writing to save my life, you know? I think I was just a pretty depressed kid and then a pretty nervous kid. I think nervous would be the best way to put it. For most of my life in early adulthood and, and that, I, I, I was not a happy person because I hated life. Um, I tried to kill myself probably, I can't even, eight times, 10 times from a period of about 10 to 16, just because I, I told my parents I was since I was three, I was a boy, and they just tell me, no, be quiet, shh. For me, coping mechanisms were definitely drug use. I uh, definitely used drugs and alcohol to cope and hide the way I felt. And to you know disassociate myself with the rest of the world, you drink and you do drugs and you completely blank out all of everything that's going on with you and your feelings. There was a period of time where I thought, maybe I'm schizophrenic. You know, maybe this is just like some kind of split personality disorder that I have, where there's this one side of me and there's this other side of me. And maybe that side can, will eventually disappear and I can just forget that it was a part of my youth. It's 9.40, what time do we play? Sweet. This is a song about celebrating gender diversity as a thing of beauty. It's called True Trans Soul Rebel. So for me, a major part of coping was the punk and hardcore community that I think saved my life in a way and helped me sort of look at the world through a, a certain type of lens. I started skateboarding. I, you know, picked up guitar like at 13 and I started playing in a band. Taunted or bullied, I would just sit behind the piano and play. For me, what always attracted me to punk rock was the idea that it was about smashing gender roles. I remember hearing about these men who dressed like women, um, but I didn't know what transgender was. Um, so I knew there were alternatives, and I was just holding on until something was revealed. Would I be happier if I were a woman? And I realized that I wasn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a trans person. I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not any longer. You can classify someone as trans, genderqueer, whatever you want. But when it comes down to it, they're just people. <laughs> 